Hello, you are Channel Real Books, and today we'll talk about environmental pollution. Environmental pollution has existed for centuries, but only started to be significant following the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century. Pollution occurs when the natural environment cannot destroy an element without creating harm or damage to itself. The elements involved are not produced by nature, and the destroying process can vary from a few days to thousands of years. That is, for instance, the case of radioactive pollutants. In other words, pollution takes place when nature does not know how to decompose an element that has been brought to it in a non-natural way. Pollution must be taken seriously, as it has a negative effect on natural elements that are an absolute need for life to exist on Earth, such as water and air. Indeed, without it, or if they were present in different quantities, animals, including humans, and plants could not survive. We can identify several types of pollution on Earth – air pollution, water pollution, and soil pollution. Environmental pollution is an incurable disease. It can only be prevented. So what are the causes of environmental pollution? So what are the causes of environmental pollution? The first one is industries. Industries have been polluting our environment, especially since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, notably due to the increasing use of fossil fuels. In the 19th century and for a significant part of the 20th century, coal has been used to make machines work faster, replacing human force. Though pollution by industries mainly causes air pollution, soil water contamination can also occur. This is particularly the case for power-generating industries, such as plants producing electricity. May they be a dam, a nuclear reactor or some other type of plant. Also, the transportation of this energy can be harmful to the environment. We can take as an example of the transportation of petrol through pipelines. If there is a leak in the pipeline, the soil will automatically be polluted. At the same time, if the tank can transport in petrol from its productor plant to the place where it will be consumed, leaks or sinks, the water will get contaminated. The second cause is transportation. Ever since men abandoned animal power to travel, pollution of the environment has become higher and higher. Its levels have only been increasing until now. Similarly to industries, pollution caused by transport can mainly be attributed to fossil fuels. Indeed, humans came across a long way from horse carriages to cars, trains, which before electricity used to be propelled by coal, and airplanes. As traffic is increasing every day, pollution follows that evolution. The third cause is agricultural activities. Agriculture is mainly responsible for the contamination of water and soil. This is caused by the increased use of pesticides, as well as the biointensive character of its production. Almost all pesticides are made from chemical substances and are meant to keep diseases and threatening animals away from the crops. However, by keeping these forms of life away, the harm is almost always met to the surrounding environment as well. Furthermore, as agriculture gets more and more intensive to feed the increasing world population, more environments and ecosystems are destroyed to make space for the crops. Some of them, like rapeseed, used to make oil, demand a lot of space for a relatively small output. The fourth cause is trading activities. Trading activities include the production and exchange of goods and services. As regards goods, pollution can be caused by packaging, which often involves the use of plastic which is made from fossil fuels, or transport mainly. The fifth reason is residences. Finally, residential areas provide their fair share of pollution as well. First, to be able to build homes, the natural environment has to be destroyed in one way or another. Wildlife and plants are driven away and replaced by human constructions. As it requires the work of industries, construction itself is also a source of contamination of the environment. Following that, when people settle in, they will produce waste every day, including a part that cannot be processed by the environment without any harm yet. Now that we have identified the main causes of environmental pollution, let us study the negative effects it has. And the first one is effects on humans. The effects of environmental pollution of humans are mainly physical, but can also turn into neuro affections in the long term. The best known troubles to us are respiratory, in the form of allergies, irritation of the eyes, and nasal passages, or other forms of respiratory infections. 
Notably, these well-spread affections can be observed when air pollution is high in cities, when the weather gets hot, for instance. On top of that, environmental pollution has been proven to be a major factor in the development of cancer. This can happen, for example, when we eat reminiscences of pollutants used in the production of processed foods or pesticides from the crops. Other rarer diseases include hepatitis, typhoid infections, diarrhea, and hormonal disruptions. The second effect is effects on animals. Environmental pollution mainly affects animals by causing harm to their living environment, making it toxic for them to live in. Acid rains can change the composition of rivers and seas, making them toxic for fishes, and essential quantity of ozone in the lower parts of the atmosphere can cause lung problems to all animals. Eventually, soil pollution will cause harm and sometimes even the destruction of microorganisms, which can have the dramatic effect of killing the first layers of the primary food chain. The third effect is effect on plants. As for animals, plants, and especially trees, can be destroyed by acid rains, and this will also have a negative impact on animals as well, as their natural environment will be modified. Ozone in the lower atmosphere blocks the plant respiration, and harmful pollutants can be absorbed from the water or soil. The fourth is effects on the ecosystem. In short, environmental pollution, almost exclusively created by human activities, has a negative effect on the ecosystem, destroying crucial layers of it and causing an even more negative effect on the upper layers. So how can we solve this problem of environmental pollution? The first way is to consider environmental planning as a base stone for developmental planning. Hence, before starting any project, a study to evaluate the environmental impacts has to be conducted. Also, shifting to eco-friendly transportation could reduce air pollution significantly. The world is working on reducing the emission of hazardous gases from vehicles, causing air pollution constantly in a variety of ways, such as car emission control, electric and hybrid vehicles, and public transportation systems. And in the future, we can manage to reduce emissions profoundly. Basic solutions for air pollution must involve moving away from fossil fuels, replacing them with sustainable renewables like solar and wind, and producing clean energy. The word is phasing out coal. Now, as solar radiation is at a climatic peak, solar power is a fantastic solution. We can reap power from the sun using solar panel systems and provide energy from home systems to large-scale systems, powering entire communities and cities. Wind power is also coming into play. Solar power and wind turbine power are both powerful forces against radioactive power and fossil fuel power. Industry plays a vital role in the progress of societies. At the same time, it exhausts the natural raw resources and produces pollution. This has created an environmental imbalance. To assess the potential environmental impact of an industrial plant, EIA needs to be carried out, and the industrial plants that do not have EIA should be warned. Green building can help solve environmental problems to an extent. From planning to demolition, the objective of green building is to create environmentally responsible and resource-efficient structures to reduce their carbon footprint. Storage facilities for solid wastes should be built in the city. The necessary actions need to be taken to integrate the solid waste storage facility that is very close to the city and to nature. The necessary actions need to be taken to integrate the solid waste storage facility that is very close to the city and to nature. The wastewater recycling project should be exercised and a recycling center should be built to reduce water pollution. Environmentally friendly products should be made cheaper to encourage people to use them, and people should know the long-term advantage of using these products nationwide. And the last way to prevent environmental pollution is to consider protecting soil, air and water as a fundamental goal of national environmental policy. The national land use and conservation policies need to be developed to reduce the misuse of productive agricultural land and the uncontrolled and disorganized urbanization. That was all. Thanks for watching.